So let's say that they give you a function and they give you an interval. And what they want is they want you to give them the inverse of this function and then the domain and range of both the original and the inverse. So here is how I want to begin. This is a sine wave, and it probably looks something like this. But we don't look at the whole picture. They only want you to look at the graph from this x to this x. These are both x's. So the graph will probably look like something from here to like up there. All right. We're only going to focus on a little strand or a little portion of the whole wave, like from there to there. So this is x and this is x. It's like I have two points. I know that this guy could be the x coordinate there, and this one could be the x coordinate here. So they're both x's, but you got to find the y's. Let's find their y coordinates. How do we find y coordinates? Well, you take the x coordinate and you plug it into x. And then on a calculator, that becomes some number. You take this x, plug it into the original calculator. It gives you some number. Let's do that right now. So here are the points that are on this curve. We have negative 7 pi over 4 comma something. And then we have negative 3 pi over 4 comma something. So just to save us time, I'll tell you that if you plug this in for X calculator in radians, you get back negative 1. If you plug this in for X, Calculator in radians, you get back positive one, okay? So these are two points that are on this sine wave. Now, let's find the inverse. Let me just go like that to separate it. So let me write down the original equation. But instead of f of x, I'll just type in y, or I'll just write y instead. Basically the same thing. Now, recall from high school, if you want to find the inverse of an equation, you switch x and y. That's one thing you can do, switch X and Y. So let me switch all X's for all Y's. X's become Y's, Y's become X's. Boom, we just switched X and Y. Let me make that look like a Y, like a four, not a Y. Right, we just switched X and Y. Now, it is customary to get Y to be by itself. So if you want this Y to be alone, you have to get rid of the sign by going sine inverse of both sides. Go sine inverse of both sides because here they cancel. So we have sine inverse of x equals y plus 5 fourths pi. Move the 5 fourths pi to the other side to get y to be alone. So y alone would equal sine inverse of x minus 5 pi quarters. This is the inverse of the original. Since the original was called F, the inverse should appropriately be called F inverse of X, okay? So let me write this down here. This is your inverse equation. Mm -hmm. This is the inverse of that guy there. So now that I have the inverse, uh, I, I want to just erase some of this, but just keep the inverse. So F inverse of X equals this. So let me get rid of some of the scratch work and let's go back to what we had before. So watch, let me go like this. So here is the inverse. We found just now that F inverse of X equals, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna write as arc sine, same thing, arc sine of X, and then we said minus five pi over four. So the original graph had two points, the beginning and the end. The inverse graph also has two points, a beginning and an end. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what they are, and I want you to notice or to observe something. All right? So, look, let me, let me give you two points that are on the inverse. So, I'm telling you right now that these two points are on the inverse. Notice how I got them. Compare them to the originals. You see that? Right? These are the original points, and these are the inverse points. What did I do? I switched X and Y. Like, that's all you got to do. Switch X and Y. Switch X and Y. And that's appropriate because how did we come up with the inverse equation? We switched X and Y. Now, before we write down our final, final, final answers, let's go to Desmos to confirm that all of this even works. Notice that I have, this is the original and this is the inverse. 
Uh, this is the, look, if I remove, this is called the domain. If I remove that, you see the whole original picture. But if I put the domain that I just had, it sort of cuts it from beginning to end. And this was the beginning and this was the end. And then the inverse points, boom, boom, are on the inverse graph. So the blue is the original and the purple is the inverse. Now to write down your final answer, give them the domain and range. The domain is all the X's. The range is all the Y's. So in the original, the domain goes from this X to this X. The range goes from this Y to this Y. In the inverse, the domain goes from this X to this X. Its range goes from this Y to this Y. So let's go back to the whiteboard and write down the domain and range of both of them. Domain of F of X and then range of f of x. So the domain of the original f of x goes from this x to this x. So I could write it like in brackets, negative 7 pi over 4, comma, negative 3 pi over 4. And then its range goes from this y to this y, negative 1 to 1. This is the domain and range of the original f of x, domain and range. Now, I want you to give me the domain and range of the inverse. Well, the domain of F inverse is the range of F, which was negative 1 to 1. And then the range of F inverse is the domain of the original. So everything's backwards. You see that? Everything is totally backwards. So on the test, homework, review, whatever we have, this is how you find inverse and then the domain and range of both the original and the inverse.